Hello, everyone. I am going to bring Mike in on the screen with me, and we will get started. Hope all of you are having a great week so far. Hey, Mike, how are you? Hey, I am doing well. I'm here. I'm ready to go. All right. Good deal. I am turning off my phone so we don't get distracted. Okay. Uh, going welcome sheila custer and welcome kate it's time for the uh, prerequisite instagram story say hi all right hello everyone hi. on instagram there we go come on over folks <laughs> all right so welcome everyone uh to this week on magnet marketers where our goal is to help you become a magnet with your marketing versus being a bullhorn i'm one of your hosts here jessica phillips with now marketing group the relationship marketing system here to help you create no like and trust relationships with your ideal audience to grow that repeat referral business and as always my awesome co-host mike gingrich co-founder of the popular app tab site president of digital hill uh, co-founder of waftio and the president of a nonprofit i give global where he lives and breathes by the philosophy of always being common and always adding value welcome mike thank you thank you, thank you <laughs> jessica good to be here again yeah, good to be here with you as well. Um, Sheila says, I think I'm being blocked by a firewall. That's not good. Um, not sure if you can hear us or not, uh, but we'll keep rolling and I'll send you the replay. Um, that way you can uh, check it out afterward. Yep, this you can always week. try to reload and go uh, restart it again. Sometimes that helps, but uh, we're going to yeah. keep diving in. Yeah, the that refresh does magic. I don't know what it is about refreshes, but they they do magic sometimes. So um, this week, diving into LinkedIn and creative ways that you can use LinkedIn to grow your leads. Uh, a couple weeks ago on Magnet Marketers, we were talking about the state of lead generation and what things work for leads and what the goals of marketers were to get more leads. And, the, and it was a consensus that marketers wanted quality leads and over the quantity and the one app that in sight that was shown to produce really quality leads um was linkedin which i mean it was it was by a, a, a larger percentage than i had even imagined so um i think we could spend some time here talking about the power of linkedin kind of the different ways that you can use it some creative ways of getting noticed and to make sure that you can increase your lead generation then from it using some best practices Yep. Yep. No, I mean, I think when you think about LinkedIn, you have to identify it as kind of like the, the go to uh, business social network. I mean, other yeah. networks can be used for business, but they also and primarily have much more of a uh, mm -hmm. social, you know, r relational aspect mm -hmm. as their premise. Uh, but, you know, not as much so with LinkedIn. I mean, that that's it's, it's geared. As a, as a business business tool. You are absolutely right. I mean, when, if you think if you're a small business, you know, like being part of a chamber group or a BNI group, a business networking international group, lead lists and lead groups um, where you're meeting on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, they have huge impact on your, on your business because you're there in a professional setting. You know what you're going into, right? You know that you're going in to support others and have them support you. And I look at LinkedIn like that kind of networking group or that kind of kind of conference setup where you're going in and you're shaking hands with people professionally and really there to get down to business. Um, you don't have as all the personal and um, fun stuff that you would have on other social platforms. LinkedIn can be fun, but it really is about getting down to business and using it that way. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's first talk about the different ways that you can use LinkedIn. And when I say different ways, I mean the different types of um, groups and profiles that you can publish publish on a LinkedIn uh, right. just to make sure that everyone's aware of those first. Yep. Yep. So you want to start with the first one? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I think uh, people are going to think through their individual profile first. You go to LinkedIn, yep. you create your individual profile. So that's that that's key. That's essential. Um, but you want to build upon that. So then you can also have uh, you, you can create groups and uh, groups are we'll dive into that a little bit more. Let's just do the overview here quick, maybe. And, but sure. uh, groups can be a, a great way to interact, drive your network, um, you know, 
develop leads and then for your company you can have that company page as well so those are yep. you know three of the keys that i'll start with what do you want to add to my, to my thoughts there no i think that's perfect um the three that are profile groups and company pages yep. um within those we call them the power of three i'm going to post a blog link in here if i can um that will allow you to kind of see uh, the different types and what you can do with each and kind of how to spread it out. So the profile is your own personal space to talk about things that are happening within your, when you're, within your day. Like that's yep. your profile. You can share links, updates, um, uh, things coming directly as a representation from you. It says Jessica published this or Mike published this. Within the group, it's also going to say your personal name is publishing something, but you're doing it to a select group of individuals that are members of that particular group. Yep. So if you have a conversation that you want to talk about, and let's say um, we're both in a social media masterminds group on LinkedIn, we can talk about all things related to that group separate from our profile. Yes. And it's limited to the members in there. On the company page now, this is the opportunity that you have to post on behalf of the brand. So this is the logo or brand saying updates on that company profile. So the benefit to that on the company pages, you could have multiple people, one, manage that. Um, two, it gives a, a place for people to check out what's happening on your, your business page. Um, and think of this like Facebook, if you were to have, uh, it's very similar to kind of the separation that Facebook has. Facebook personal profile is very similar to your LinkedIn personal profile. Facebook groups, very similar to LinkedIn groups. And company profile, very similar to brand pages on Facebook. They are kind of work the same exact way. Two are going to come from the individual that's publishing it, the profile and the group, and the company one is going to be the brand itself. Now, in order for people to see the company updates, they have to follow that company or go look at that company page. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's one way to publish it. On your profile, they have to be connected to you or look at your um, your personal profile if you have it open for people to see. And in the group, they have to be a member of that group. But the great thing about groups are that you get notifications if somebody publishes in there. Um, so you get these instant alerts and you have some extra functionality to kind of build deeper relationships when you have a group um, created for that. Yep, yep. Now, and I think it's still the case that as a member of a LinkedIn group that you can send, uh, it's been 15 free messages per month to members. So it kind of gives you a way to reach others that you might not be connected with other than in the same group. Yep. Yes. And then as a group um, admin, you can send one message per month to everyone within that group. So let's say you have a group going on. I'll use Now Marketing Group as an example. When it comes down to conference time, we will send a blast out about, hey, here's um, you know Social Media Week. It's going to be coming. Just want to give you guys kind of the first update to know that Social Media Week is coming. And here's all the details. And it sends everyone within that group an email notification. If yeah. you are a company that has a job opening, something like that, you're able to send that out. And you are able to grant individuals within that group different levels of access to publish on behalf of the group. Um, so you can give different managerial accesses or um, administrator accesses to help you kind of manage all the members within that group as well. Yep. But I'm a, I'm a huge fan of groups, but um, I like to do it around. So here's a kind of a, a ninja hack, if you will, with LinkedIn yeah, groups. Okay. So if you're creating uh, a LinkedIn group, I definitely recommend that brands do this, but they don't do it as a uh, creating a LinkedIn group around like their company name. Create a group around the type of people that you want to get in the group. So I'll give you an example. If you are a contractor and you're targeting insurance agents in Northwest Ohio, create a LinkedIn group called you know, insurance professionals in Northwest Ohio. If you create this group and start getting the people in that you're wanting to talk with and have a conversation with and build a deeper relationship with, create the group specifically for them with the intent to welcome them to join. But um, we've had great success with this, with creating it around the type of individuals that we're looking for versus something that's directly related to the business itself. Um, that way you're getting the members in that you want to build a relationship with. Yep, yep, yep.
Yeah, no, I think now w- when I think of LinkedIn, it's it's really unique and different from a, a model such as Facebook, which has some of the similar components. It, just because with, um, I think with LinkedIn, uh, your your profile is kind of the dominant tool you're going to use to interact with people, and then um, groups is kind of the second tier and your your company page is actually kind of the one that's the most difficult really to get some traction on it's just because you'd have to work hard to get people to follow that and, and get the news feed mm-hmm. that type of thing so it's just different that way yeah but it's huge for brand advocacy so here's my next tip so one the group create the group around the people that you want to get there right and then invite people okay um and i'll go through some group best practices here in a second but the the next thing is your company page, post updates, and then have your team members. Make sure that everyone within your company, if you're going to commit to a LinkedIn presence, has a LinkedIn profile, You know, especially the customer-facing team members. They have a LinkedIn profile. They're following that company and say, hey, you don't have to worry about creating content on your LinkedIn page if you don't want to. Share the company content. Okay, so make sure that they're going in and sharing it. Or if you have a social media account manager that is responsible for managing that brand, we um, log in on behalf of the team members within that company and share the content that's on the company page because now it's getting more visibility from all of their connections. But you are right in saying the thing that gets the most traffic is the individual personalized profiles within LinkedIn. I mean, that's definitely going to be the win. It's it's the people to people connections that that are going to um, definitely resonate more with the individuals on LinkedIn. I think people look for people they don't necessarily always look for brands unless they're looking for um, a job or they themselves are trying to solicit that business. But um, definitely, definitely have the team members engage with that LinkedIn profile. Uh, to create that brand advocacy there. All right, so let's go through, um, if you don't mind, Mike, some of the tips on um, overall the best LinkedIn success. Um, You talked about it first when you said complete your profile fully. That is definitely the number one thing that you need to do. Have a headshot that is you. It's not time to put it with all your team members yeah. or anything no, and like this that. isn't this isn't the beach photo this <laughs> nope. isn't the outdoor photo the woodsy photo mm-hmm. this is the, the professional image get that right you know and uh, right. this this isn't um, you know a logo or you know something like that no yeah okay? and it's get not even right. a far away one it is one up close your face people need to see you yeah yeah definitely. yeah and then, and when we say fill out the profile, I mean, um, they give LinkedIn gives you a lot of tools, and I don't think most people use them. You got to be robust with this. So um, that 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 summary message, you know, needs to be uh, sharp about uh, you know who you are, what you do, and the kind of the value you bring. And then um, there's there's other tools, so you can load PDFs in there. You can um, you can connect uh, you know multimedia pieces within there, and and those. Give you it's basically like a, a portfolio place that uh, can describe you know what you and you know through that your company brings. Yeah. So, so I mean that's Absolutely. that's huge, and I think it's um, uh, not done well by a lot of people. They they just they, yeah. they kind of move on quickly, and you got to take some yeah. time in that. That's the one and, thing, and, like yeah. when you set up profiles and you just try to, oh, I'm just trying to set it up and you skip through those sections. You know, yeah. LinkedIn makes it incredibly easy to go back and edit one. And two, they give you a cheat sheet to know whether or not they give you like a star rating when you go yeah. into your profile and say, where are you at and completing your profile? And they'll consist- consistently remind you, hey, you still need to add in X or Y or Z. You know, you need to fill that out completely and then add in the extras, like you said, Mike. But going back to the bare bones basic, put your name in, put it, you know, don't get fancy with the name. I I read something uh, yesterday even. It was kind of very timely uh, by the LinkedIn expert herself, (laughs) you know, Vivian. Um, And she she listed it again. And don't get creative with your name. Just literally put your name because it goes against LinkedIn policy. If you're trying to say uh, the social media expert, you know, Mike Gingrich in your name. You don't need to get fancy with it like you like you do on other social profiles. Just yep. put your name there. Then put your title um, right below. 
um, then a full description of what you are currently doing within your role or a summary about kind of, you would almost want to use this section instead of listing out, hey, I do X, Y, Z tasks per day, list out like your commercial for that role. Um, and, and especially if it's your current position, like I don't to see a problem with listing maybe past positions. Here's some accolades that I achieved while I was there and kind of some day-to-day -day skills that I mastered while I was at this job. But your current role put exactly kind of your your uh, 60 second, 30 second kind of spiel on, on what you're doing to add value in, in someone's life right yep. there uh, yep. within that position. Uh, here, here's how I I have seen it done and talked about, and, and I, I kind of recommend this model. And that is when you begin that, that summary, you think of it as um, headline, you know, cause it, your, your name is your name. You got that right. So, but then after that, in, in that first piece, you know, think of it as headline, you know, uh, what do I do? And then um, summary and the summary should include a couple keywords uh, that mm -hmm. are, are, are relevant to, to your, your industry, your, your product, your services, what you do. And, um, then, I mean, you want to think about that, that ending that summary. This is before you list some of your resume stuff, you know, things you've done, mm -hmm. but end with a call to action of, uh, you know, what, what kind of uh, solutions, problems, you know, solutions do you offer? Problems do you help solve? And um, somebody should contact you because you can do what? Exactly. Yep. I, I like that. The call to action, I think, is 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 it's key. That that is yeah. one that's missed a lot. You're right. And then even from there, you can list out specific skills that you have. So if you're not, you know, packing it in kind of that summary, you can list out, hey, if you want a quick reference of things that I know how to do, LinkedIn allows you to add 50 skills. Be careful with putting um, skills that you you really aren't comfortable in doing, I would say there, you make sure you list, you know, specifically 50 things um, or up to 50, you know, that you really do well. So if somebody wants kind of a, a quick reference sheet on what does this person really know how to do, there's 50 skills right there. Um, people can endorse you for those. Now, I've heard mixed reviews on whether people trust endorsements or not. I am one that I do uh, tend to trust it if it's over 100, you know. Um, but, you know, other than that, I know people give endorsements, you know, just more freely, I would say, than recommendations um, on LinkedIn. Um, because one, it is incredibly easy to do easy. that. Yeah. 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 And uh, two, it's just kind of you, somebody gives you an endorsement, you give them endorsement kind of back and forth. Now, but, now maybe, maybe you should slow down just because there might be a few people out there who uh, didn't get that distinction between endorsement and recommendation. So yeah. um, maybe you want to flush that. Sure. So I was going to see if I could really share my screen real quick here and right. show this. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen real quick. And let me know if you're, can you see my screen? There it yes. is. Okay. All right. So I want to show you an example. Okay. So this is skills and endorsements. So these are literally things that you're saying that you um, know how to do. Okay. And then others can quickly give you an endorsement. So like, I'm going to go to Mike's profile here. Yep. So we're talking about endorsements oh. there. Yeah, so I'm going to go to Mike's profile, and I'm going to give him an endorsement for something. So I want to, if it goes up, um, go here, and I'm going to endorse him for social media by this little plus right here. Um, I am saying, yes, I can validate that Mike has this skill set. So that is what an endorsement is. Now, if you go to recommendations, However, recommendations are literally someone writing um, a testimonial for you and then allowing you to link it onto your profile. So they will say, yep. hey, I've worked with this uh, this person at X location and um, they did provide the services that they said they were going to do, etc. So it's literally like a testimonial. And I'm going to scroll down here and show you kind of an example of this. So these are recommendations. Um that someone else has wrote, wrote uh, and you are able to um, accept or reject those and then feature those on your profile. You, you can ask people to uh, recommend you and that is definitely a ninja hack. You definitely wanna ask a few people that you know um, that you've done some work for to recommend you to get started um, before they you know, naturally start coming in. Some people will definitely be willing to do it but maybe they haven't thought about you know, doing it 
you know, until you kind of probe it. But I would uh, lead with actually recommending others first, recommend them first, and then ask for, you know, recommendations. Um, it's not saying you're trying to give to get, but you definitely want to give others recommendations if you're wanting recommendations. And while I'm on this page, though, I do want to show you just a couple other things real quick here. So this is what we're talking about by um, adding in extras. You can feature different um, projects within your LinkedIn profile. This is something um, that if you have, you know, let's, this is a video, a video that you want to show. Um, if you have downloads or something that you want to feature, you can feature these right on your LinkedIn profile and it gives you um, a lot more visibility on the things that you've worked on. You can also put links. You can talk about different projects that you've worked on and uh, add others to this to say that you worked on it with them and you can put you know the summary of the project and then a link to the the media that goes along with that specific thing excellent cool. excellent all right i'm gonna stop screen sharing here for a moment Ooh, how do i stop that <laughs> let me okay here we go Boom. All right. Boom. Like that. <laughs> All right. So um, definitely this the endorsements are valid. You can give endorsements to others. It is a nice way of you, um, I don't know, just doing giving a nice gesture to someone. One, uh, you want to make sure that it's definitely valid, that you do feel like you can endorse them for that. But it is a great way of um, just showing someone else that you're paying attention to them. Yep. Um, and then as you give recommendations, it's, it's also the same thing. I mean, giving recommendations is a great way of, um, you know, showing others that, that you care. Um, and it's a nice gesture to give it before you get them or ask for them. Yeah. Now, um, so, I mean, your profile is, is kind of your key interaction mm -hmm. point and, uh, you know, sharing updates there then. I think that's, you know, once you're connected to somebody, it becomes kind of all about the news feed on LinkedIn. And that's that's how you um, are seen, how you kind of stay top of mind with people. Yeah, let's talk about the connecting with people part because I feel like LinkedIn is one of those networks where people are a little unsure if they should connect with anyone that gives them kind of an invitation to connect um, because it is that networking profile. So you don't always feel as connected with everyone um, or as close as people to people like you would on Facebook, for example, to accept them as a friend. But there still are some rules to connecting with others on LinkedIn that I think everyone should follow to really um, get more leads, one, and two, to protect their reputation. Because LinkedIn is really your online resume, your reputation, uh, your professional kind of portfolio right there. Yep. Um, so one, I would say, do not connect with people that you really do not know um, unless they are sending you some kind of message telling you why that you they want to connect with you and you maybe have some kind of common ground or some background to where you could see it's valid. Um, but be very careful because there are some people that are um, that don't use LinkedIn legitimately and they will connect with one person. Let's say they connected with Mike and they're some kind of scammer or something. Um, and then they try to connect with me, but I may see that they're connected with Mike. So I'd be more amped to trust him because I trust Mike. And then now it kind of, you know, spirals from there. Then they have access, <laughs> then they have access to my network and can do the same thing yeah. over and over and over And that's again. happened. That's happened to me. So I've, I've, I've taken that, oh, well, so-and-so, you know, and I've had mm -hmm. to begin taking uh, that, the, that this person's connected to them with a grain of salt because they've accepted everybody and that watered down their network a little bit. I actually just had this happen last week. So I took a screenshot though of this individual. They were connected with about six of my connections, right? And um, they had a profile picture, you know, looked legit. And they had a, um, it said that they worked in uh, as a former police officer actually. And, but they said they were from New York, but it said like Lima Police Department. So I was really confused. So I took a screenshot of the profile picture and I sent it to the person, one of the people that I knew that, they had had his connection. I said, Hey, can you tell me how you know him? 
And she was like, I don't. And I'm like, okay, well, you're connected on LinkedIn. So I just wanted to check. She goes, no, I just must have accepted it. And I'm like, okay, good to know, you know, um, because that's how that, it can that's happen. good on your part. You didn't slide into that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, here's what the next step is. The next step yeah. is that you accept it and then you get a message and it's some sales pitch about, you know, da, 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 da. Can we do da, da, da. So, mm -hmm. um, that that's what happens, but that's also what you don't want to do on LinkedIn. Okay. It, it's still yeah. a social network folks. All right. So this is the rant mm -hmm. part where it's yep. still a social network and you need to build yep. relationships. You cannot just immediately hardcore sell and say, Hey, I see you do this and we can yes. headhunt for you and hire you developers. And when can we talk 30 minutes here tomorrow? How about at four o'clock? Get away from me. Leave me alone. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Preach it. Seriously. Like selling, selling on any social network is always a bad idea. Oh. And even though LinkedIn is more professional and people are there to do business, they're not there to be sold to. Yeah. They're there to see if you have um, something that they could benefit from. And if you, uh, if, you could benefit from their services, but you can do it without going into those sales pitches. I, uh, I've seen this drives me crazy too. So there's different ways of posting on LinkedIn. There's one, the, the updates like you would share normally, but there's also posting to where you can publish a piece of content that is like a blog on LinkedIn. And then it goes on your profile kind of featured right there. I'm going to share my screen as I talk about this, yeah. if that's okay. Like the publisher, okay. you're talking about the publisher now? Yes. Okay. I'm talking about publisher. So, um, let me go back here. Can you see my profile? It's coming. There it is. Okay. So when you go to share an update, so I'm going to go back to the home screen here. When you go to share an update on LinkedIn, you can publish one by sharing an update, which is literally just, you know, some, some text and a link or whatever you want to post right there. And you can choose who you show, show it to. Okay. You can share it with just, uh, with anyone that would see your, your content or, um, just your connections. You can upload a photo or you can write an article, which this is the LinkedIn publisher, which just got a new look recently. But this is literally like um, a blog article that you're publishing within LinkedIn. And it goes to their app called Pulse, which is then curated for other people to look through and find content. Um, so it gives you huge reach and visibility when done right. Um, but this is really used to publish blog style content. This is not used because it goes out to more people to publish some kind of sales pitch there and have it there. I've seen individuals use this and they say, Hey, here's why you want to buy our service. And then link to this, their website page and just do that over and over and over again. And it is so annoying. Like this is, this is an idea, you know, we talked about, um, the shift of content and this recent post that I just published uh, today and you put it up and it works just like a blog and people can interact with it and it gets filed within specific sections on this LinkedIn pulse. Okay. Yep, yep. This is how you want to use it. This is not used as often as it should. And I think this is one other way of definitely generating more leads because you're going to get a lot more visibility right here. And it's a way of showing your thought leadership by publishing right there. Yes. Yep. A excellent thought on the, the thought leadership just establishes your credibility. It, it gets mm -hmm. good visibility within LinkedIn. People have the opportunity to, to you know, like, comment, on that and that can drive um, more visibility in, in the LinkedIn newsfeed and, and people are, uh, you know, perusing that. So that's a, that's a good, and depending on how they have their um, uh, settings set up, I mean, mm -hmm. they, they might get notifications. You know, a lot of people can get LinkedIn uh, summaries via email because, you know, it's, it's alerts, notifications, things like that. So top of mind kind of pieces there. Publisher is a good tool, often overlooked. And, and yes. they're getting, um, I, I will say they're getting indexed pretty well in Google. Oh, it's great. Say, okay. It's yeah, great. It's, yep, yeah. It's a tool. Yeah. And not just that, and, uh, just to give you an idea on uh, LinkedIn, I, I have some stats here that I'll share, but um, not just publishing on those posts. Don't You shouldn't just publish those posts, I should say but engage with other people's content. It is a great way to find other content 
curated content that you want to share on your profile too. And people like knowing that you're seeing their stuff. So if you, if you can follow individuals there, follow the people that you really admire and you like within your space, you know, um, and then share their content and comment, like on their, like their content, it's going to give them the alert that you're doing it. And it's going to get more eyeballs back to your profile. So, um, Speaking of more eyeballs on your profile, I just want to touch one thing and then we talk about like um, continuing on with who to connect with and who not. Okay. But um, the eyeballs on your profile, look at who's looking at your profile. Okay. Like LinkedIn allows you to see who's looking at your profile. Now, depending if you have the premium LinkedIn or the free LinkedIn, it'll show you how many, but I use this as a great way um, to see if I just had a sales presentation with someone or I just met with somebody, as soon as I had a meeting with them, I'm going to try to either, if, if it was a scheduled meeting, I'm going to try to connect with them beforehand on LinkedIn, do some review of them, try to find out a little bit more about them. It's a great way of doing some research on your, on your prospect, find a lot about their background, kind of where they went to school, some talking points that you can then have a conversation with them. I'm going to try to connect with them. But then after I meet with them too, if we're not already connected, I'm going to try to connect with them. And then I'm going to look back at my profile every day. I look and see who's looking at my LinkedIn profile. As soon as they look at me, then I'm going to go back and look at theirs so they can see that I'm noticing that they're noticing. Does that make sense? A little back and forth going I on see there. you seeing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it gives you a great way of, you know, knowing that each other, I think there's, uh, I think there's value in that because then people feel like, oh, they've seen that I've seen their profile. Now we're going to connect. Um, and or they're going to send a message because if they're continuing to look at your profile and then you're looking at theirs, they're like, I should probably tell them why I'm stalking their profile. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but don't say, um, hey, I saw you were looking at my profile. Yeah, Don't do that. Don't okay. do that. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, don't do that. That freaks them out. Like, hey, 12 hours ago, you were on my profile. Yeah. yeah. But if you That's connect with someone and, and you use LinkedIn's default always do update the message. Don't just use the default message. Okay. Yes. yes Personalize you. it. Yes. Take a note in there. You know, yes. that this is your chance to, it's this first impression. Yes. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Um, uh, we about skip that. So I really appreciate you jumping that in. <laughs> Definitely customize that message. Send a follow up via LinkedIn, that LinkedIn messenger um, to connect with people. And when you're connecting, when you're first getting started on LinkedIn and you're building up your connections, you want to connect with your clients. You want to connect with your team members. You want to connect with people within your circle. Um, think of professional connections and start the process off with connecting with those people that you definitely want to stay in contact with and customize the message that you're sending to them. Um, the, a huge benefit to staying connected to them is that LinkedIn gives you those heads up when somebody has an anniversary, when they have a birthday, when they're celebrating something, if they have a job change, and it allows you to quickly congratulate them, thank them, tell them happy birthday right there. And it's just that other way of just continuously staying in touch. It's it's awesome way to keep your professional connections you know updated when you when you don't have time to personally connect with them one on one it's the next best thing yep it's, it's quick little connections just help you stay top of mind that that type of thing that's that's important and uh yeah so i think um yeah some good things i mean you got to be active in groups then and uh you, you can you can yeah. share some messages there and again don't be spammy and share you know hey take a look at this or come over here and look yep. at this but uh add value you know be a resource there and you know mm -hmm. Um, thank people or say, you know, they, that was helpful. You know, that people will, will see that and appreciate that kind of thing. So it's about, you know, uh, being, being gracious, being, uh, social, being, being helpful in that regard. Absolutely. Definitely. And within the LinkedIn, um, groups, make sure you get to know the people that are in there, um, you know, like their comments, follow them. Um, it's really, I, I know there's different views on this, but I say, you know, five to seven LinkedIn groups, only enough groups that you can choose. You can be a part of others, but choose five to seven that you're really going to be active in. You don't just want to be, you know, a member and not be active. Take advantage of being an active member within that group and you're going to get noticed yep. a lot more. So yep. how many would you say? 
on LinkedIn groups. You, you went with five? I said five to seven, Max. Yeah. I mean, depending yeah. on how much time you have. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you can be really active in much more than that, no. I mean, yeah. and, and, and that's, so the, you're just mm -hmm. getting diluted or it can overwhelm you kind of thing otherwise. So I, I, I like that. Yeah. And then I like to go through, um, you know, just the group and I'll pick the group and I just see who, who are new members, you know, I'll yep. rotate through the groups once a month and I'll just say, who are new members, you know, who's actively engaged, um, you know, and I try to take sometimes the connections that maybe they are just on LinkedIn and bring it into real life on the flip side too. Yep. If I see somebody who's really active on LinkedIn and I'm really noticing what they're putting you know, putting out there, I would send them an email and say, Hey, I'd love to grab coffee with you sometime and learn more about X, what you do or whatever. We used to call these uh, one on ones in BNI. You know, you, you, you're part of the group and everybody shares within that group, but you still took time out to have a one on one with someone that was in that group to just get to know them a little bit more, especially yep. if you can help one another, you know? Yep. Maybe you know some people that you can refer them to um, and, and you know that they, they could be a good advocate for you, but really start with the intent of serving them and the rest will, will follow from there. Yep. Yep. Now, I don't want people here to take this for, for granted, so I'll just make, make sure we mention this just because mm -hmm. um, I think it's important, but that is the mobile app. Uh, I think you got to have the LinkedIn mobile app just because yeah, it, it makes LinkedIn uh, simple to use, you know, kind of simple to see the news mm -hmm. feed, simple to, to, to share posts and, and, you know, those types of things, simple to interact. So just want to encourage people to, to grab, the, grab the app. The other thing I love about the app is the pulse addition to that is yeah. all the content that you can get fed to you. And then you can not only share it on your LinkedIn profile, but you can also share it on other social networks. So it's a great way of kind of, if you're trying to, um, you know, encourage your, your connections to follow you on other networks and vice versa. You know, if you have that Pulse app and you're sharing maybe an update on LinkedIn, um, you share it on Twitter afterward or share it on Facebook, you know, get those connections. Actually, uh, Vivica, her update that I read on Facebook was from yeah. her LinkedIn profile and I hadn't followed her on LinkedIn before. So it was a great way of, you know, seeing it on Facebook and then joining her over on, on LinkedIn. Okay, so it's a, a cross-pollination kind of effort there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now yeah. I know. I, do you have time for me to give you another cross pollination tip that I I use there? We got absolutely. time for that. Absolutely. Yeah. So definitely. I don't know if um, a lot of people use this, but uh, within my Google account, within Gmail, I use the uh, reportive um, add-on. Okay, mm -hmm. and and so that is a a free add-on to my Gmail account that when someone emails me. Um, it'll, it'll pull them in. If they're in LinkedIn, it pulls them in on the side by, based on their, if that's tied to their email address and nice. I can see information about them and I can connect with them right there. So, you know, so, sometimes when, when you think about your business relationships and this just happened to me, okay. so th this is why it's fresh is that, you know, I'm connected to someone and we're doing business together and, um, they bring in another party to the relationship we're doing something together the three of us but the, the the you know uh so he was a mutual connection to both but um i was not to that third party and so when the email trail began to come around you know i could see oh there they are there's their linkedin profile boom i could hit reported to reportive connect with them send them it, it pops up a little right there in my gmail i can i can put in my message here hey just great to connect this way uh with this project you know would like to be connected on linkedin and boom, it goes out to them. So it's it's a way for me that I found. It's it's called Reportive. It's a free add-on um, that you can get, you know, within Gmail, uh, Google accounts, and then it it basically helps you tie those people that you're emailing with into your LinkedIn network. That's really a good idea. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard. Of, I've used like the HubSpot one, but Reportive yeah. is nice. That's free too. Yeah. So it's just uh. Re Report, report of like it sounds to tie yes. in Yes, two P's, okay. R-A-P-P-O-R-T-I-V-E. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a great one. I like it. I'm sorry, did I say report? I mean, okay, so I, I'll, I'm going to type it in there. Oh, it's, like it's, rapport? It's, yes, like there, oh, there we bad. go. Sorry. <laughs> you did no. spell it out too, and I apparently my brain was not. 
following that. I was talking but, fast. So I'm going to share my screen one more time just because I want to hit on a couple of the things we talked about as yeah. we wind down here um, because I really think that LinkedIn is this one that is – it is the one that's going to bring you those those high quality leads. Um, not that the others aren't great, they are, um, and they're great for bringing leads too. But LinkedIn has a strong power to it. So one, make sure that your personal profile is complete. It is fully filled out. Your name, your headline, um, your summary that we talked about. So that description of who you are what what you are about make sure that this is 100 percent filled out and linkedin will tell you what your profile strength is right here um, on the side and it'll let you know if you have any other areas that you need to work on so make sure to look at that fill out your skills and endorsements list out your experience and th that lead in um, with links to additional media so you can tie that um, in together for a deeper dive on your profile as a whole. You know, list out any other accolades that you have, awards, um, groups that you're in, projects that you've worked on, you know, make sure that you add in those little bit of extras that are really going to tell the full story on what you're able to do and who you are as an individual. Um, you know, ask for recommendations, give recommendations. Um, you want to make sure that you're building really, really strong connections and then share those, um, publish that published content, um, within LinkedIn as well as the content that you're scheduling out on a regular basis and sharing. I say LinkedIn is one that you can, you can, um, bare minimum do once a day. Um, but I recommend doing three times a day on LinkedIn, you know, kind of morning, afternoon, and the evening. Um, you just, it's up to your, you and your network on when they're on. Um, but that just seems to work well. You get people early in the morning, you know, in the afternoon and then again in the evening. Um, and then, use LinkedIn groups, be a member, you know, you can search and join others, uh, other groups. You can create a group, create a group around the individuals that you're trying to attract within that group, and then be actively engaged in the groups. Um, LinkedIn does have a cap on the number of groups that you can join. I believe it's, is it 50 groups that you can join or is it 20? Maybe less. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you on that one. I don't know. I that know that's... I've reached my limit a couple of times, and I've had to like okay. change it up because I was trying to file, like you know, join uh, client groups as myself, yeah. and it, yeah, yeah, you get you get locked out of that from doing that. And then the company page, um, you have to claim it as your company, and you have to have um, a company email address in order to be able to claim your company page. Um, and it has to be attached to your LinkedIn profile. So like, for example, it, let's say now marketing group, I wanted to claim that company page and be able to update it with um, the logo and, you know, some, some nice background design here and all that. You have to have an, I would have to have an at now marketing group.com Gmail address um, in order to do that. Um, and then you can add managers on from there. Um, but make sure you know you're publishing here. This is great content then for your team to, to fill out. Um, and then it also gives you great analytics on the company page, uh, which your group page does have some analytics. It just has membership analytics, but not the post analytics like this has. Yep. So this really gives you the great notifications. Use that, watch who you're connecting with. So if you get a connection that you don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, Make sure that you're you're being cautious because that could be a false lead, and then for someone else that is going to be trying to connect with you, you know your your other connections, and then look out for these um, notifications of somebody celebrating an anniversary, a birthday, um, something like that. You know, make sure and engage with it, and it's another way of you uh, being able to be top of mind to them. Yep. Yep. A, a great tool. Think of it as a, a lot of it to, to be used in that top of the funnel, you know, kind of mm -hmm. uh, d discovery, connecting, you know, building your credibility and uh, and, and doing some, some networking that way. Yeah. Uh, one other tip that I did not mention, I just want to share it real quick, is that um, LinkedIn does have something called LinkedIn Answers, which is a great way of answering questions um, for others that they have um, on LinkedIn. You can actually go and answer questions, and then you're seen more often as well and show up more on the profile. Um, 
And then the other thing that LinkedIn has is Linda. They they own Linda, which is a training um, tool that you yeah, can what use. Yeah, what all they bought? Like, you know, SlideShare? SlideShare. Um, they bought Linda. Um, uh, those are the key ones that are just... Yeah, there may those are the two big ones that I know of for sure. Um, and then the very, very last thing is jobs on LinkedIn. I do not hire anyone. I mean, it depends on your, I guess, your industry. But for me, I post all of our jobs on LinkedIn because it's a great way for me to get more than just the resume when somebody applies. Um, and it's really inexpensive. Um, you you can post, you know, a job here for $300. We're a career builder monster. I mean, they're upwards of $500. You get the job for 30 days. Um, and I'm not going to click on our job because I don't want to, you know, if somebody's, <laughs> you know, still employed somewhere that it applied or whatever, but the job there, you get more when, when you post a job, you get access to all the candidates. You can promote it and then they can apply within. And not only do you get your resume or their resume, you get their background, you get connected to their LinkedIn profile and you can see what they've been doing for the past couple of years. You can see their skill sets. You can see the recommendations that they have. You can see how many connections they have. I mean, you get a really inside scoop on this individual above and beyond what you would get anywhere else. Yep, yep. I love LinkedIn for job hiring. <laughs> so I'll do, Excellent. I do. I just brought us Morgan, which started uh, on our, and Jacqueline that started uh, on our team within the past two weeks. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, so folks, right. that should, that should provide them some value there. I think that, yeah. uh, I mean, creative ways to use LinkedIn to drive leads, a uh, great tool, but you know, you, you gotta, you gotta fill out that profile. You gotta be strategic mm -hmm. about it. You, you do have to be active and, and we hopefully getting some tips on where to spend your time, how to do that. Yes, absolutely. So I thank all of you for joining us today. And for those of you that are going to be watching the replay um, and those of you that are not in our Facebook group yet, we do have the uh, Magnet Marketers Facebook group. I'm going to post a link in here. And Mike, do you want to talk about next week since I will be at Content Marketing World? <laughs> yes, Jessica is going to be out. So uh I am going to be joined by one of her uh, workers and teammates there, Terrence, and uh, we're going to be diving into a little bit more of a, a client angle on social media and, and a problem that I hear many people talking about frequently, and that is, you know, like, wh what do I post? And so we, I want to talk about breaking through the content brain freeze, breaking through the content brain freeze, just how you get stuck. We don't know what to do. You know, uh, this week, next week, we're, we're looking ahead. So ideas and tools for, you know, great social media content. Just I think all of us have those things around us. It's just a matter of thinking outside of the box a little bit. So hopefully uh, Terrence and I can deliver some value on that. Absolutely. That's a great topic. Yeah, definitely. One that we can send to multiple people after it's done as well. So. All right. Well, I thank you so much. This flies by so fast when I'm talking with you, Mike, but I just get so excited. This this one did. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. It just feels like we could have kept <laughs> going on LinkedIn here for a while. I yeah, it really does. But I thank you for your time as always. Um, and all of you, um, I hope you have a great remainder to your week. And always remember, it's better to be a magnet with your marketing versus being a bullhorn. And we hope to see you next week here four o'clock Eastern Standard Time right here on Crowdcast. Thanks, Mike. All right. Take care. See ya. Bye.